All right, so here we are back in our uh, uh, video, and we're going to be uh, covering uh, more of this series, where we're going to be creating a character. We've created a character in Blender, and we're going to be bringing it into UE4 and Unity, uh, so we can use it for what we want. So far, we've created a model. We've got a uh, we modeled them. We uh, UV unwrapped them. We textured them. We've got the rig set up around the outside of them, so we can uh, animate them as we'd like fit. And we also have a morph target set up on the body, so that way we can, like, let's say, if this was an eye wink or something like that. Since he doesn't have a face, we're just going to make his head expand a little bit. What we're going to do now is we're going to export an animation directly to UE4 and Unity using both morph target animation and by moving one of the legs uh, just around, just to show that you can do both a morph target and a uh, leg or, or a bone animation in combination. Later we'll discuss how to do, uh, in another video, how to do them independently. So cool. Okay, so we've got this scene from the last one, Model Rig 04. Let's go ahead and grab everything. I'll just do File, Save As, and I have a new folder called Animation Combined Morph and Bone. And that'll just be let us know what it is. So we'll do Model, Animation Combined, 01, and that's Blend. Okay, and do Control shift s plus Enter. So now we've got it saved off. Let's just make sure our poses are still working. Nothing's broken. Sometimes things break. I'll put on my screencast key so you can see what I press. Go to object mode and go to pose mode. And we can grab one of these uh, little leg bones. And you see if I'll try to move that, nothing will happen. You'll see this skeleton will move. And you're like, oh, is it broken? Did it break? Not quite. I can actually go down to this little slider here, the rig main properties. And when you're selected on that, you can move it from forward kinematics to inverse kinematics. Now the leg moves. Inverse kinematics moves the, the end of the foot or the joint and allows you to move it around. Uh, forward kinematics just makes it so you move these little rings and it moves the leg at each little point. Kind of like a, like, a, like a marionette or I guess that would be like a little doll or something. This is more like moving the ends of the legs to move the thing around. So I move that around a little bit and we know our, our pose is still working. So I'm going to put that back where it was and hit Alt R G S. And just make sure it's back exactly where it was. Same scale, same rotation as it started with. Great. So we've got our pose in place. Let's go ahead and open up the dope sheet editor. So we'll go over to here. We'll split that open. And we'll go ahead and hit uh, dope sheet. And this is just the editor. I'll show all our keys for our character. And let's see. We'll set our time to about 50 seconds or 50 frames for our animation. We'll hit home on the keyboard down here. And I think maybe home works here. Sometimes it breaks. Yep, it does. Okay. So now we got 50 in the range here, 50 in the range here. And let's go into pose mode. Pose mode is what we use to animate. So we need to be in pose position. We've got all the layers selected. Let's deselect the two bones uh, layers that actually uh, are the deformation bones because we don't want them to be keyframe necessarily. We want just the control bones. So grab all of them in pose mode. Hit I on your keyboard. Uh, let's put this back to zero. I on the keyboard and do location and rotation. Now we've got frames in all of uh, the different spots. Let's move to about 20, maybe 25 frames uh, in. And let's grab that that bone again that we had in the foot. See how it still moves and everything. So let's go ahead and turn on auto keyframing with this. I think if we, yeah, we just click on that. One of these allows you to switch around. You can do other things. In our case, we just want uh, whatever this gives us, I think. What does this say? Uh, automatic insertion. Yep, this is what we want. And we can go ahead and just grab that foot and we'll bring it out here a little bit and maybe we'll rotate it. And so now you can see it just brings that leg out and then it just continues on. So at the end there, we'll just do Alt R G S, and that'll put it back to the start. So now if we hit Alt A on the keyboard, it just brings his leg up and kind of brings it at an angle. Maybe we'll just kind of make his foot turn inwards a little bit more. I like that a little better. Doesn't really matter, but just kind of look better. So he kind of lifts his leg up and then puts it back down, and it's a continuous loop. Very nice. So we've got our little bone animation here. Now we want to do a morph target animation. This is a little bit different, but pretty much the same. We uh, go ahead and click on the body. And down here under Dope Sheet, we want to go to the Shape Key Editor. You'll see there's a little slider here. And uh, that slider allows you to set keyframes for the, uh, the actual uh, morph target over here. You can also set it here by uh, go hovering over it and you know replacing a keyframe, right-clicking, or just tapping I. And that'll set a keyframe as well. So what you're going to do is just going to have it start at 0. We'll go to 25 when he's at the full leg lift. We'll bring it up to 1. And then we'll go back down to 50 and we'll slide it back down to 0. So now in total our animation is this. Uh, we'll just go back here. We've got our leg lift and our head expand. Both a morph target and a bone animation at once. So you could have a facial animation and the body doing something at the same time. Which is uh, really useful for animation. Great, so we've got that all set up. Let's go ahead and grab everything. 
and we want to make it so that we can uh, import this into the scene. So it might be useful to actually uh, export this once as a base model with no animation, and then once again with animation. That way in the future you'll have like a, a model in the engine that won't have to be deleted if something goes wrong. You'll just have kind of the base character model with no animation, that you know, T-pose and everything, with the morph target set up, and then we'll import it a second time with animation, and that will have the, um, the morph target animation and the leg animation. It'll make sense in a second, but just want to, sh want to preface that. So let's go ahead and go into, uh, get it all set here. We'll grab everything in the scene. Uh, it doesn't really matter where this is. We'll just put it back to the beginning, and maybe about there. Uh, we can set this to zero, really, if we wanted. That's fine. Uh, I think it'll still work at one. Go to, we'll save this first. We'll do Control shift s plus, and we'll save it with a 3 at the end and hit Enter. Go to File, go to Export, FBX, and we want to open up our Blender to Game Engine No Anim, except we want animation. So what kind of animation do we want? The best way to do this that I've found, uh, this is just my own technique, is a separate file for each animation. So if you have a walking animation, you have a running animation, you want that base model, uh, just that model with nothing on it, you know, like the rigged model we had earlier, leave that alone, and then in new, create new files for each animation. That way you don't have to deal with naming and stuff. So sometimes it gets messed up. So what I do is I go under Bake Animation, and I turn off NLA Scripts strips, and All Actions. This just exports a global animation. Whatever is in the scene currently, uh, it'll export that all as one, one thing with like the, whatever the name of the file is, which works well for what we want. Same settings as before, otherwise. Selected Objects, all these are fine. Armature Mesh and Other, Geometries, no modifiers because you don't want the shape keys getting deleted. Smoothing set the face, armatures uh, only deformed bones. Uh, this set the root and no leaf bones. Now that we've all got that, let's go to export test and we'll do model rigged export uh, with morph and bone anim. Or let's do, uh, let's do model with bone and morph oops morph anim animation so what this will do is this will export the whole model with the bone and the morphs and everything and the animation great we'll do that once the same thing we're going to do one more time file export fbx this time no animation that way we just have a copy that doesn't have any animation like i said so do model with bone and morph and we'll just do that great let's go ahead and open up a uh, new project in uh, UE4 I'm just going to delete the character I had in here from last time and delete these out as well and delete this first thing we're going to do is we're going to import that no animation version so just the model with bone and morph okay good bring that into the scene all these settings look good we just want the uh, import morph targets to be on that looks nice okay and hit import great everything seems to have gone well We'll just go ahead and save that real quick. And let's open them up. Cool. Let's just make sure the morph works. And of course, this is a no anim version, so there shouldn't be any animation. We'll just see that once this compiles and I save it, that goes away. Skeleton looks good. OK. Animation looks good. Let's just make sure the skeleton rotates correctly. Yep. We don't have any weird scaling or rotating a lot. And if we exit out of this now, we can go in and we can import the animation. Here's the cool thing. We're going to go to animation, uh, and we're you know model with bone morph animation at FBX. Instead of importing the whole thing again, we can just untick the mesh. And you think, oh, the morph targets are bound to the mesh, not to the skeleton. But this still works. If we just import the skeleton applied to the one this model we imported earlier, we could just import a single extra little blip that's the animation, and not have to have this whole setup again, which is great. Hopefully it'll work. So we'll go ahead and select the skeleton of the character we already imported, the base model, and then hit import. And right there we have a little animation. Let's see how it plays. Look at that. Head expands and leg lifts. So we've got uh, a morph target and bone animation combined playing in uh, UE4, which is exactly what you want. Uh, now what we can do is we can get this playing in scene. So let's save this, and I will. Go, you can just grab this out here. I wonder if this actually works. Yep, just like that. You can just grab that model and put them right out there, and uh, it will play for you. Another way you can do it is if you want to, you know, like create a model and a blueprint and some other stuff, is you can grab the character, and right now he won't do anything. And you can go to Blueprints, Open Level Blueprint. Of course, you can create a blueprint per the character itself to animate this, but it's just a simple way. And we'll do uh, Event, 
or event on or begin event begin play and then we'll take a reference we're actually selected on the model so it allow us to do a, a reference to it create reference to model blown with morph play animation and plug that in and set it to looping and set the animation to play that animation you can rename that of course if you want and now when we hit play it plays so it's a uh, blueprint group blueprint driving the animation and you could have that inside of a, a character blueprint or anything like that uh, this is just the level blueprint to show it or you can just drag the uh, animation sequence right in the scene and that does the trick so that's how to do it in UE4 and uh, we get the whole animation in morph target and bone let's do the same thing in unity so I just have a, a unity scene here I'm just going to delete the model out we had from last time and we'll do the same thing we'll import a base model that way, when like I was saying before, we can import a base model and import animations that will add on top of it. Or if they get messed up, we can just not destroy the base model. That way, it doesn't have to be brought in every time. So we'll bring in the base model, uh, model with bone and morph, open, and that'll bring that in. Some settings here are all fine. Rig is good. Let's go ahead and go to generic humanoid. Hit apply. Let's check the configure. Hit save, and it looks like a good setup to me. If you go in here and just kind of select all the bones with Control A and then move around the scene. If it isn't completely frozen and allows you to move around freely, it's a good sign too that it's not completely messed up. You can see when you zoom in a little bit, it gets a little slow, but that's not too much trouble. And cool, so we can go on that, check the muscles. All that looks nice to me. Reset that and hit done. Good, and we hit apply. Now there's no animations on it either. Let's go ahead and drag it in the scene, make sure the morph target looks right. Body. And we got our head expand right there, and we can expand the head. Awesome. So let's go ahead and bring in that animation. Import new asset, uh, model with bone and morph animation. And he's right there. We can check how that looks. And you see head expands and leg lifts. Great. Now this one just imports it with a default name, but uh, it's fine. We can just do uh, morph, anim, and leg lift. And that'll save that, and we can just hit apply. And uh, the way Blender works, it'll actually import the whole mesh uh, once again each time. But that's actually okay. It doesn't use much more memory, especially if you're not importing textures and, and materials, which you can disable, I think, over here, um, which is it's not a big deal. Because in the final uh, version of the uh, game, it'll just use the animation from this one and apply it to the base model. So you don't have to worry about it eating up extra space other than in your editor a little bit. And you see there's the animation there, and here's our base model. So what we can do is we can create an animation controller to play this in the scene. Because you saw it playing right here, fine. That's good, but we want it in our game, right? Go to animation, uh, or I'm sorry, go right click and go to create, my bad, create uh, animation controller. And we'll just name this uh, animation controller test. And we open this up. So you see you have any state, entry, and then you have exit. Let me just get over there. What we want to do is we're just going to take that animation, morph, anim, leg lift, and bring it into the scene, and we'll create a duplicate. Control D to duplicate it, and make a transition to it, and then we transition back to it. This will just create an infinite loop of uh, just playing that animation. So now if we go back to the scene, and we go and drag our model into the scene, and we'll put game down here, that way we can see what maybe we're looking at a little bit. We'll move him forward, rotate him, rotate him. Maybe we'll turn the light around a little bit. There we go. Click on the character. And uh, you go, oh, what's going on? Nothing's really doing anything. If I hit play, nothing happens. So what you got to do is you got to assign that animation controller. Let's give it a second to start up there. Nothing happened. So nothing happens. you got to assign the controller that we made. So do the animation controller test right into there. And it'll give you some warnings here. Oh, yeah. I forgot to do this as well. My bad. Under the animation tab, make sure under rig, you have to select each time that it's a humanoid. Hit that, and then it should come up as configure, and we want those animations in. My bad. It's a good little warning there. It tells you there. That's good. So we've got our controller in there. We've got our avatar set up. Looks good to me. Let's see what happens if we hit play. And look at that. He's lifting his leg, and his head expands. You can see these points here. These are for, like, root motion, I think, and, like, the animation. Uh, just to be aware of that. So here we go, yeah, you got the character in Unity, and his uh, legs lifting, head expanding. So this is a morph target and bone animation combined. So uh, we've got it working in Unity, and if we go back to UE4, we've got it working in UE4 from the same file. So that's exactly what we want, and uh, pretty much that's the end of this video.
so up next we're going to do one final thing and that's going to be to f export the morph animation and the uh, bone animation separately and allow them to recombine them in editor so that way you could have like a guy talking as he's running and have it like link to code rather than having these play automatically like you don't want to always have the same expression but it's good for other things to have it like this so that's it for now and uh, thanks for watching if you found this informative please subscribe and leave a like and uh, I'll see you in the next video thanks a lot